On Wednesday, November 9th, a new film drops on UFC Fight Pass, Thug Rose, Mixed Martial Artists, and I'm joined now by the former UFC strawweight champion, Rose Namajunas, and the filmmaker, Marius. Uh, Rose, I'm curious, I, you know, when things drop like this, kind of in the height of someone's career, it's, I find it always really interesting when an athlete puts out something like this. Why did you feel like this was the right time for a project like this to be done? Um, it's sort of... I. I mean, at first it kind of fell into my lap. I think we, you know, Marius and I, we uh, connected very well back when I first won the belt in 2017. Um, he's a fellow, you know, Lithuanian of Lithuanian descent, um, like kind of heritage. And so we share that in common. And I was a huge fan of his um, other Dream Team documentary. And so that was, we, we definitely hit it off right away um, in the beginning, but we didn't really have, uh, you know, it, it was kind of like a leap of faith um, on his part as far as like just kind of investing the time and in, in, uh, interviewing me. And we kind of persisted uh, over the past few years um, to sort of get the financing and getting all of the pieces put together. There was a lot of different um, elements to, to making this happen, but uh, here we are at the Austin Festival. <laughs> So yeah, it just, sure. it kind of just happened, but it didn't like it was a lot of effort. But I think to start with it, there was just a lot of it was just meant to be, you know. Yeah, and uh, Marius, I mean, obviously, this is a huge undertaking, as Rose kind of said there. What was the, you know, some, the main thing that kind of had you gravitate towards her and feel like she would be, you know, someone that would be uh, compelling to put something together like this for? Uh, well, like Rose said, we met back in 2017. She had just beaten Joanna and, and won the belt the first time and, you know, shocked a lot of people, shocked the world with that victory. And, um, you know, just just having followed her career and also knowing about her background and like Rose mentioned, her Lithuanian background was very interesting to me because we're, our, both of our families and parents are from Lithuania and we're first generation Lithuanian Americans. And, um, you know, I really wanted to tell her story and infuse some of that cultural background into it and then also um go into the issues you know she's talked a lot about a lot of topics and things over her career um but the goal was to kind of go one level deeper on on all of those things and let rose tell her story in one you know unified and cohesive place um and tell it in her own words instead of having it being told uh, all over the place by a whole bunch of other people so that was kind of the mission Right. And sticking with you for a sec, I mean, what's when you see kind of the finished product of this, obviously there's, you know, countless hours that go into it. What do you think is the, the most challenging part in putting something together like this? Uh, well, every film and documentary, you know, is obviously unique and presents its challenges. And, um, you know, in, in this case of in the world of MMA and, and trying to get as close as possible to, to an athlete who's also going through intense intense training and about to go out and perform in, in this, you know, something that can be quite dangerous and they have to be extremely focused. And so it walking that tightrope of, of always pushing and nudging and trying to get the cameras into the most, you know, you know, private and, 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 uh, honest moments, um, but not overstepping the line and disrupting something that's a very delicate balance of, of their, of training and focus and all those things. So that, that was, that was an interesting line uh to, to thread and then but uh, yeah and then just being blown away also and viscerally affected by being backstage in Madison Square Garden and in the locker rooms and just feeling this energy that I couldn't really describe um, I hope the film helps capture that for the for the rest of us who are just fans or who, who are new new to the sport um it's really really hard to describe so I hope the film helps to capture that intense emotional roller coaster yeah, and I thought it did. And for you, Rose, like, obviously, you have to be willing to um, expose yourself to a degree to do something like this, whether it's the high moments or the low moments. A along the way, was there any points where like, you were just like, hey, I don't want to do this, like, this is not something that I want to continue proceeding with, or even in those low moments, did you kind of acknowledge that it's good to open yourself up in a certain way? Yeah, I always, uh, I never said like, never like pull the plug on everything, but I, you know, I've always been just um, learning from Pat and him just, I, I, I've i definitely evolved from being this like, um, you know, jumping the gun type of a person to like, you know, he kind of just 
pulls me back every time. It's just moment by moment, just get through each moment. So yeah, there was times where, yeah, we had to take a break or like, all right, we need to reset or just refocus on what's important. Like obviously, you know, protect myself at all times is number one. But um, once I ever, when, every time I just refocus and um, kind of rejuvenate myself, then we we're able to get back to it and, and really put together some great content. So it's always just like, just like a fight, you know, you, you need to take just moment by moment. You never want to jump the gun and be like, oh, I'm, I got this fight in the bag. Like you never do. So <laughs> you always, but you never give up either. You just got to keep, you know, tiptoeing to the finish line. Yeah. And I've obviously been covering your career for a long time. I've heard you speak, you know, about a lot of things, be vulnerable with us, be open. And uh, you went more into, you know, a lot of the things that you've been through in this, but to have your family kind of get involved and, you know, your mother and your brother and kind of speaking about some of the things that you've been through, that's kind of a different layer to it because we're not hearing it from you. Um, What was that like to kind of see that and have, you know, them open up a bit about your life? Yeah. Um, definitely that's that was definitely like a very difficult thing to kind of explain and i um definitely learned how much my family loves me but also at the same time like it it uh it's a very healing process for all of us because we we've been through a lot and so just to see that come out on film uh i don't know i guess it's hard to describe but it's 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 really cool when you watch it (laughs) yeah and for you marius i mean to obviously you're dealing with some very sensitive content here to some degree um how what's like the main challenge in kind of figuring out the best way to portray that to where you're obviously um you know just treating that kind of subject matter with the way it should be um as you know as a documentarian i you know you just try to let the let the subject tell their story, you know, as, as, um, organically and in their own words as possible, you know, there was no kind of goal to, to, to push it a certain direction or edit it to to portray a certain way. I I wanted to just let Rose, you know, tell her story in her own words to the extent that she wanted to, or didn't want to. Um, and I hope, you know, we always try to create a, a, a comfortable and safe environment for talking about some of those difficult subjects. And, and Rose and I talk a lot about it off the camera too and just about what what um talking about those things can mean for other people and and in terms of a positive message and um impact like a social impact that that this film could have in terms of helping people who have been through abuse have been through different struggles um i think rose's story is very inspirational and so um we hope that that it does help help people out there yeah, as it should. And Rose, I think one of the big kind of takeaways from watching it, one of the messages is like positivity prevails, right? No matter what kind of situation you're in or what you're going through. Was that one of the the biggest things that you want people to take away? Like no matter what your hardships are, um, you know, if you, you keep positive and try to look at the positive elements of it, you can get through anything. Yeah, 100 percent. I think um, another important thing is like, uh, yeah, the just like being able to forgive, being able to forgive um others or yourself or just whatever and also acknowledging maybe some uh that we're all not perfect or whatever and just those are definitely some important elements being able to um take such hard things and turn it into to gold or just um something wonderful that um everybody you know can maybe learn from or benefit from and um yeah i think it it also it, it, yeah, it doesn't always have to be doom and gloom, right? Like that is a part of the, there. there's the highs and the lows, right? And so I think capturing those low moments is just what makes the high moments that much better. And there was a lot of moments captured in this. Was there anything that uh, like when you watched through it, you're like, oh, like I forgot that, you know, that was recorded. I saw that clip of, you know, you punching Pat when he was sleeping and had like the cover over his eyes. Like, was there anything um, along those points that like when you saw it, you're like, oh, wow, like that's amazing that that was kind of captured and brought into here. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of like little things. Um, yeah, just maybe seeing what some of my coaches or teammates have to say you know um just like really sweet things and and just seeing how much people like genuinely care for me and i'm just super blessed that that uh people that i do have 
um, great, a great support system. Um, having Halle Berry in there, uh, that was gold, you know, like just, I don't know, there's just so many little things that, uh, yeah, I, I could name, I could name off a list, you know. <laughs> yeah, so so when you look at it is it like now like oh like look how much i've accomplished especially like the sporting side looking at the two title reigns all that stuff is it like wow like you know i've done so much or does this drive you to be like hey you know i want to accomplish so much more that maybe we could do a part two of something like this in the future i think both i i, I think it's great that um there it's just this big like kind of unified cohesive story um about everything from the beginning till now to like that, that is a huge like sandwich to bite into <laughs> alone. And then, but it does lo leave room for more after. And um, there was even stuff where after we, we filmed where it was like, dang, it would have been cool to, you know, kind of get into some of that stuff. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, just kind of leave it, leave it open-ended like that because um yeah, there, there is, there's always, it never stops. I realized that um, just a few weeks ago, I kind of realized like um, telling somebody, like kind of just talking somebody through um, some challenges over the phone. I was talking about how becoming the champion, it's like this goal that I had in mind. And, you know, like you get the title of being a champion or whatever, but it really doesn't stop. It's just like a mindset. It's a mentality. And I realized that you're never you're always chasing after greatness, like being the best version of yourself. I know I say I'm the best, I'm the best, but it's, I'm literally just trying to be my best self, you know, not compared to other people. And, you know, most of the time, if I am my best self, I am actually better than, you know, the rest of my competition, but that's not what it's about. It's all about putting your best foot forward and, and just keep striving towards that regardless of, you know, what's going on. Yeah, and one of the closing lines um, of the film was, you know, you have faith that the best is yet to come still. Uh, we mm -hmm. haven't seen you, you know, since the fight with Carla. I know you were very frustrated that night and you're saying, you know, you want to be back pretty soon. But here we are, you know, a few months later and still nothing on the books. Where where are you kind of right now? Where does, you know, fighting uh, fill into your list of priorities? And when do you think we'll see you again? Yeah, so I want to, like, let this documentary debut and just kind of um, – sort of close this chapter because uh, it's a big one. Um, and then from there, I'll, I'll have a better idea probably next year or sometime. But um, yeah, I'm still training and just saying, saying a martial artist and, and just improving my skills. But um, I do need I do need the time to let this dust settle because it is a big, like I said, it's a big sandwich. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like how long, you know, how do you feel now about the fight with Carla, you know, all these months later? I know there's a lot of criticism at the time and you felt you won, but now that you've had, you know, so much room to reflect where, what's your kind of feelings on it? Yeah, um, I definitely, uh, I got what I needed out of that fight. I know that um, for the fans, it was terrible, <laughs> you know, and I definitely pride myself on being like a very exciting fighter. And I've always had exciting fights. Um, but I realized that being a mixed martial artist, I am an artist and, you know, you don't always have Mona Lisa's, right? Sometimes you just have like splotches and, you know, <laughs> abstract art pieces. And so um, as much as it, you know, it might've sucked for the fans, for myself, I got the bare minimum I needed out of like whatever personal, uh, things that I was looking for, but yeah, I would have liked to obviously won and then obviously win in devastating, like dominant fashion. But, um, going forward, I, I'm, I feel pretty at peace with that. I mean, definitely, you know, being a, uh, martial artist and a competitor, you know, like that definitely like has a little fire inside and, it, you know, I still, I still can be a little salty sometimes <laughs> when I think about it, but you know, it's like, I, I, I've been through this before. I've been here and I know that um, that's just, it's what I needed. So I'm, I'm fully grateful for everything, you know? Yeah. I'll so, one more for you and then I'll close with something for Mary. So were you going to say something? Yeah. I was just going to add to the, to the, the Carla fight. I think when you see this film um, and you see there's an, you know, there's an epilogue that includes some information about that fight, but it's just shows in the completeness of Rose's life and career, what a sort of, blip this or just you know this is just one piece of this journey um and and i think that um hopefully a takeaway from the film is you realize like win or lose having the belt or not having the belt is 
is actually a small thing in, in Rose's journey, her complete journey of, of her life. And then, like you said, the, um, the, the best is yet to come quote, I, you know, that, that I think some sums it all up uh, for, for, you know, Doug Rose mixed martial artist part two, um, <laughs> maybe in five years, 10 years, who knows, but um, yeah, there's a lot more to come, whether it's in the ring or out of the ring or, you know, that's, that's for Rose to decide. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of, you know, what Dominic Cruz said the first time he lost the title is like, you know, the best thing he ever learned about himself is knowing that he could be happy without having that title. So I think that's yeah. something that's that's pretty important. And uh, sticking with you, though, Marius, like what's the, the biggest thing through this process that you would say you've learned about Rose that maybe people didn't understand um, before watching this or just from all these interactions you've had with her over the years? Um, well, I think, I, you know, definitely there's that rose that we that we see in interviews and and in the ring and and you know where she like lets go of her emotions after the fights and and wears her heart on her sleeve um but but yeah but spending more time you know um just at home with rose and, and pat and and her her family and kind of you know on the road and some road trips and um just seeing you know the um the the intense emotional ups and downs and then that zeroing in towards towards a fight week and the fight and how intense things get and how they have to sort of shrink that tight circle even even closer and smaller and um and and you know and, and just again yeah the overall emotional intensity of of the sport and how it weaves into someone's life um i think that's not what a lot of people don't see when they just see the fights or even just the 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 promos or the fight week uh behind the scenes stuff there's there's just so many intricacies and um and you know just daily life challenges that um that you don't always see so that was that was quite a learning experience absolutely and just one last one for you rose i know you got to get out of here um it is kind of serendipitous that this releases the fight week of the next strawweight title fight we got uh carla oh, Jang fighting in new york um how do you think that fight goes oh um i you never like I think a lot of people are definitely sleeping on Carla. I think people are just going to assume that Whaley is going to run her over and all this stuff. And rightfully so. I mean, Whaley is obviously a machine and she's uh, a beast. Like she, I mean, in the, in the documentary, she definitely represented a very scary opponent that I was facing, but uh, you know, Carla's uh, I, uh, I mean, I'm definitely leaning more towards Whaley at this point, but um it's really hard for me to to necessarily count, count Carla out. I think if uh, it really just has to, I hope that it doesn't <laughs> because I, I hope that um, the fight isn't like anything like my my fight with Carla last time. Um, but it just so happens that I think there's either a chance that it will be kind of similar to that, like kind of boring where they're both just point fighting or it's like, one one person gets the other person to come out of their game plan and in a, a devastating fashion maybe finishes the other person so um that's that's kind of what i those are the two uh spectrums and i'm I'm hoping for it to be an exciting fight though <laughs> for sure awesome yeah. well really, really appreciate the time guys uh, obviously rose i think it's amazing that you did this you always wear your heart on your sleeve and i think this is why you're so beloved in the sport and i think anyone even if they're you know a, not really a fan of mixed martial arts. I think this is very powerful and has a lot of strong messages. So uh, amazing job to you both and looking forward for the world to be able to see it in a few short weeks here. Yay. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Appreciate you. Awesome. Take care. Have a great day. See ya.